some interesting dynamics at play for tonight's slate in daily fantasy baseball because I have zero pitchers projected to get at least six strikeouts for tonight. Obviously, someone will because that's how things work. But from a projection perspective, not a single guy hits six, six strikeouts. And that means that a couple things. A, there's probably going to be a flat distribution of upside between these guys, but also pitchers who don't have the biggest upside typically are more viable now than they would be otherwise because you don't need as many points to hang on a slate like this as you would in others. So guys who may be really good real-world pitchers but don't get a lot of strikeouts suddenly are going to generate a lot more interest for tonight. And that's a good thing because there are some fun guys who fit that bill who are pitching. So let's dive on in and get you set and let you know what this all means for Monday night slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Here to break down this 11-game main slate for Monday night with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. And there actually is some weather notes for today on the East Coast. There's a chance of rain in Philadelphia for the Phillies and the Braves. Doesn't look like it'll be too bad, but check back on that one later. Rain odds are a bit higher in Baltimore. Um, It depends on the timing of the rain moving out. It looks like the rain will be there during the day, moving out sometime around first pitch. Check back on the timing of that uh, for the Orioles and the Rays. There is a chance of rain in Boston for the Red Sox and the Guardians too. Just a spot to check back on there. I don't think any of these games will be in true danger of not playing, but at least some risk there. So check back on weather in Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Boston to make sure those games are good to play for tonight. We'll dive on in and let you know the implications of the way this slate breaks down and who grades out well on a low strikeout slate in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts because it's not just MLB DFS podcast. We also have PGA, UFC, and NASCAR all in the same place and the NFL once again just around the corner. We'll have those podcasts twice per week here once again this year. So search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Also, FanDuel's World Fantasy Baseball Championship for 2022 is coming up this September, and there are still chances to get yourself qualified. This year's live final will be in Chicago in September, and I will most likely be there, I'm pretty sure. The live final features $2 million in total prizes with half a million dollars going to first place. If you want a chance to get in on that, check out the qualifiers over at FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel Fantasy app. Live finals, always a blast. Chicago, one of the best cities you could be in during the summer. So uh, excited to be back there as always. Uh, check that out again, FanDuel.com or the FanDuel Fantasy app. Eligibility restrictions apply. Get yourself entered for the FanDuel WFBC in 2022. Pitching preview for this Monday main slate. Max Freed is the highest salaried pitcher on FanDuel checking in at $10,500. Tony Gonsolin is 10 2. Sean Manaya comes in at $9,900. Jake Odorizzi is 94. Corey Kluber is 91 with Noah Syndergaard at 9,000. Then we have JT Brubaker, Nick Pavetta, Jacob Junis, and Chris Flexen as the other guys at $8,000 or higher. Now, again, This is not a high strikeout slate, which means we can afford to use just good pitchers who may not typically grade out all that well because they don't get a lot of strikeouts. And there's just a lower opportunity cost to use them today than there would be if there were a Scherzer or someone like that available to us elsewhere. But this composition of the slate is why I think Max Fried deserves to be the top guy for tonight. He's facing the Phillies, which is not a great matchup, but it's also not awful. They have a 112 WRC plus against lefties, but a 23% strikeout rate. They can hit for some power, but Freed helps neutralize that because we got 11 starts now on Freed with slightly fewer curveballs in his mix. He's let up just a 30% fly ball rate or 32% fly ball rate in that time, a 30% hard hit rate. And that helps him be an elite pitcher, even without a ton of strikeouts. Obviously, that matters on this slate where strikeouts aren't as big of an issue. He can get some strikeouts himself. Freed has a 22% strikeout rate across that span. He has an 8-plus strikeouts and 3 of 11 starts. He hit 9-1. and one. That was against a very good Dodgers offense. And he has faced a lot of low strikeout teams. So maybe that's weighing down his number a bit more than where it should be. 
we're probably not going to see Freed put up huge numbers when he's facing a lower strikeout team, but this is not a low strikeout matchup. And we don't need as much upside to hang on this slate as we would in a lot of other slates. So I could just use the best pitcher, and I think that Freed is that guy. So I'm feeling fully willing to load up on him here and be high on Max Freed on a, a slate that is lacking in strikeouts, the one area in which he is not a standout elite type of arm. Tony Gonsolin does know the same name value as Max Freed, but he's also a really high quality pitcher right now. And he gets the Nationals at home tonight. So I will put Gonsolin number two behind Freed here. The matchup is a low strikeout one. The Nats are at 20% against righties in their current active roster. So they're not a great opponent from that perspective. But they're also not a big power team with just a 34% fly ball rate and a 134 ISO. And that's Gonsolin's key flaw. He lets up too much dangerous contact. Everything else with him is pretty good. We're up to 10 starts on Gonsolin with his current pitch mix. He has a 3.35 skill interactive ERA in the time, which is actually the best mark on this slate. He has a 25% strikeout rate and a 4% walk rate. Really good peripherals, and the results match it to boot. His ERA in the time is 2.23. That's even with the batted ball issues that sometimes do crop up. Now you're putting Gonsolin in a less threatening matchup and things are going to look pretty good. I wouldn't put him on Freed's level from an overall perspective, but Gonsolin is at home, pretty good matchup, a safer matchup for tonight. I like him a lot. So I have him second, but if you wanted to put Gonsolin first above Freed, I wouldn't push back on that. He is a very good option. He is worth the 10-2 for tonight. And Gonsolin, to me, needs to be in their top two pitching options for tonight's slate. Now I'm going to put Aaron Ashby in the third slot and he is the value play as well, but I think that he'd be third for me, even without considering the salary being a value here. He's very risky. Ashby is very risky. And that's why his salary is low at $7,400, but he can get strikeouts. And that's more than a lot of guys can say on this slate. Ashby's facing the Rockies. They're an okay offense versus lefties with a 113 WRC plus. They don't strike out a ton. But they're also not an offense I think we need to avoid versus a lefty. Ashby has made nine starts since he moved into rotation full-time. And the underlying numbers in that stretch are very good. He has a 3.41 skill interactive ERA with a 26% strikeout rate, which actually is the top number on this slate. The batted ball numbers with Ashby not as good as when he was a reliever, but still pretty solid. The results have not always followed suit, though, because ERA is 5.31. Ashby has let up four plus runs in four of his nine starts. And some of those starts were against pretty poor offenses. That's why I'm not going to put him higher on my list, but he has upside and not a lot of guys do. He had 12 strikeouts in one game. That's a spike game. He had nine starts or nine strikeouts to start after that. And he's fully stretched out. Now you look at his pitch count and see he went 22 pitches last time out He was on just three days rest after he threw 101 pitches the start before that. I don't know why the Brewers had him start that game, but they did, and it didn't work out. But now he's had a week to get fully rested back up. I think they'll probably give him the full leash once again. So yeah, there's a lot of risk because the results are bad, and they're bad for a reason. But Ashby has upside tonight that I'm not sure anybody can actually touch if he is fully, fully on his game. I'm going to use Ashby. I will often, again, talk about whether or not I'll use a value play. I will use Ashby, actively use him, could consider him for single entry because I'm okay with the risks there. So Ashby in consideration for single entry, he's a good play overall. I will use him, and I would put him third overall in this slate behind just Freed and Gonson. We'll talk about a couple more guys I'd consider in things to watch as well. First, let's go through some stacks. And stacking are really, really fun tonight, which makes sense because if we have fewer strikeout options at pitcher, we're probably going to have better options for stacking. And that is the case here, starting off with the Dodgers. Facing Paolo Espino, and he's really struggling with hard contact right now. That's leading some big games for opposing hitters. So I think the Dodgers should be, if not the top team, at least near the top for sure. We've got seven starts on Espino in the rotation. He's letting up a 45% fly ball rate with a 46% hard hit rate. Those are really rough numbers, and those numbers have bled into his results as well. He has a 4.88 ERA. He has led up multiple home runs in three of his seven starts, and one of those multi-homer games was against the Pirates. The Dodgers are a lot tougher than that team. 
it's not the warmest park on the slate, but that's less of an issue tonight than it would have been back on Friday, where there were like 90,000 games in the 90s. There's only one game tonight with a temperature higher than 85 degrees. So this one is kind of a blend of everything. It's a good offense. It's a good matchup. It is a good enough park. So I will be high on the Dodgers here and put them either one or two on my stacking list for tonight. Espino does let up more hard contact to righties, but the split is not that big. So I think we can kind of just pick the guys we like most. And I think that that discussion should include Jake Lamb if he plays tonight. Lamb actually hit fourth on Sunday. There were a lot of guys sitting, so I wouldn't expect him to hit there again, but he could hit sixth and Lamb was crushing in the minors. He's had good numbers so far in the majors. His salary is $2,200. I'm in. I think that it makes a lot of sense. I would use Jake Lamb if he were to play for tonight. Uh, if I need him for the value, if I'm going with Max Reed, or if I just want to give myself more flexibility to load up on the Dodger studs, if you want to jam in Betts, Freeman, Turner, using a guy like Lamb can make that a lot easier. So Jake Lamb, very much in play for tonight, um, even though didn't start the year in the majors and he's, it's been a while since we've seen a uh, good Jake lamb uh, at the big league level. I'm going to put the giants second for stacking. They're a very close second. They could easily be first on this list. And I wouldn't push back if you were to put them there. I think that they are very legit. They're facing Tyler Gilbert tonight. Gilbert has had a pretty rocky season, both in triple a and the majors in triple a his X chip is 7.71 and he has almost as many walks as strikeouts. He's actually been a bit better than that in the big leagues with a 5.20 skill interactive ERA, 14% strikeout rate, and a 7% walk rate. So I guess that's encouraging, but it also means those peripherals may get worse. And we can stack against him as is. He's letting up a 44% hard hit rate with a 50% fly ball rate. And that's even with some pretty weak competition sprinkled in there. He did face the Giants once, and he held them to just one earned run across three and two-thirds innings. But they had multiple barrels in that game, a lot of hard contact. Now they get to see him for a second time. I think they'll do better this time around. As far as the park goes, I'm not sure if the roof will be open. It's 92 degrees at Chase Field. Um, typically, the roof is open at that temperature. You can Google Diamondbacks roof information. It'll tell you if it's going to be open. As of Monday morning, they had not announced if it would be open for tonight. I think it will be. But even if the roof does wind up being closed, I'd be okay being on, in on the Giants for tonight. As always, uh, the case with this team, though, you just have to make sure any righties you want to use will stay in the game once the lefty and Gilbert is out of there. I would not feel confident with Austin Slater, personally. Darren Ruff tends to stay in a pretty good amount, so he's a bit safer. Still not perfect, especially now with Brandon Belt being healthy again. So Ruff is kind of a fringe guy. Slater's probably a no for me. Ruff, a fringe guy. Wilmer Flores should be okay. David VR will probably play the entire game if he starts, now that Evan Longoria is out. Pretty good numbers in the minors for VR. So keep it in mind. Uh, you can find how long guys play in games at Baseball Reference in their batting game log. So you can see if it says CG means complete game. If it's like GS to eight, that means they left in the eighth inning. So stuff like that. Uh, I would recommend checking it out for Giants guys because they are pretty quick to, to yank guys out once they lose the platoon advantage. So keep that in mind. Slater's a big one. Rough kind of a good there. Flores and VR are safer, at least in my mind. The third stack is going to be the Astros. They were in a really rough park for hitting tonight. It's just 59 degrees in Oakland, which is the coldest on the slate. But I love their matchup, and I think that matchup should be enough for us to put them third here behind the Dodgers and the Giants. They're facing Adam Aller, who has bounced between AAA and the majors this year. The results of AAA are fine, but he's not overpowering anybody, and his peripherals are not great there. We've seen that translate into the majors, too, whereas ERA is 8.56. It's a small sample of 27 and one-third innings, but... His skill interactive ERA is 6.01. His expected ERA is 6.41. He's letting up a lot of fly balls, plenty of hard contact too. And Houston did just see him. That game was in Houston. So not a great park, but a better park than this one. In that one, couple home runs, three earned runs in less than five innings. So I wish this game were somewhere else, anywhere else outside of San Francisco or Oakland, you know, but even accounting for that, I think this is going to be 
among our top stacks of the night, despite it being a pretty poor park for hitting for today. I will treat it as such. So Oakland to me, uh, the Astros for me, a really good stack for today, despite their downsides. One thing that would hurt them is if Jordan Alvarez can't play because his hand was sore, which is why he sat on Sunday. And I was concerned about the hand initially when it's coming off the IL because handmate injuries are bad in terms of sapping power, even when guys come back. Then Alvarez came back and he's like, no, 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 no concerns. Hit a couple dingers, tons of hard contact, had some barrels in there as first starts back. So the injury, the absence yesterday is concerning. If he plays, I'll likely use him. Um, if he's shown that he can get through this pain and still be Jordan Alvarez, but not having him out there would be a blow to this lineup as a whole because he is so good. So downgrade the Astros if Alvarez cannot play. Downgrade him a bit because he sat on Monday if he does play or sat on Sunday. Um, but overall, I'm still willing to go here. Just some concerns around the best guy for offense, for DFS within that lineup. Let's go now to things to watch. A couple other pitches you could make cases for tonight are Sean Manaya and JT Brubaker. Manaya's facing the Tigers. They're not a super high strikeout team against lefties. And Manaya's strikeout rate is 23% across his past 11 starts. So, you know, you could still use him. Um, his strikeout rate not being super high pushed him down the list for me a bit, but it's the Tigers. I still think he works just not as high on him as I am on Freed or Gonsolin or Ashby. Brubaker's facing the Cubs. He's had really good batted ball data since he started using his sinker more. And they're letting him go deeper in games because he's been more effective. I'd put Ashby above both these guys because I think that the salary reduction is good. I think that the upside is good. But Manaya, Brubaker, both in the mix. So pretty wide open slate of pitcher. If you love Manaya, you love Brubaker. I think there's justification for being high in them as well. I'm just not quite as high in them as I am on a, on a guy like Ashby. I almost had the Padres in my top three stacks. I think they're good enough for that. Just decided to go with the Astros despite the park above them. The Padres facing Drew Hutchison. He's lining up a, a lot of balls in play as a starter. A lot of hard contact too. So obviously Machado and Voight are fine as the righties, but I also would bump the lefties here with Hutchison letting up uh, more fly balls than them. So Jerks and Profars had decent numbers this year. Jake Cronenworth, obviously. I'd bump up the lefties but still favor the two powerful righties within this lineup over them. The Mariners work for one offs for tonight. Uh, just kind of probably missing some key firepower with uh, Jose Rod uh, uh, with, with Rodriguez and uh, with Winker both being banged up. So I don't know. I think that um, with Julio Rodriguez, if he's able to play, I'd probably be hiring him, but it's a wrist injury. And like, that's another thing that can kind of sap, sap power out. So He's facing Glenn Otto. Um, I'm cool using guys against him. It's also warmer at T-Mobile Park than it usually is tonight, which helps the bats there too. So bump up the Mariners. They're healthier than expected. Uh, they're okay for one-offs that they're not, but Julio Rodriguez, if he plays, I think that he'd work for a one-off, but wrist injuries to me always a bit concerning because they can linger even when a guy is playing as well. So Julio Rodriguez, definitely okay, but and the Mariners are okay for one-offs, but the injury concerns do lower them from a stacking perspective for me. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for tonight. The boring one is Mookie Betts facing off with Paolo Espino out in Los Angeles. Espino, a lot of hard contact, a lot of fly balls, not a big split between righties and lefties. Mookie Betts, Pretty good at baseball. So we'll go Mookie Betts as the boring home run call for today. The fun one, I'll go Wilmer Flores facing off with Gilbert. One of the righties should stay in there for the Giants for the entire game. I'd assume the roof is open for tonight, so it's a good environment for hitting. Flores has always shown good power against lefties. So the home run picks for today, Mookie Betts and Wilmer Flores. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot again. Weird slate, given the way that the strikeout stuff breaks down, but still one where I feel like we can find some good options uh, within our, our pitching options. So shift your mindset for sure to not be a strikeout centric, but um, still think it's a good slate for pitching for tonight. Do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast. So you just search for Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You get MLB, PGA, UFC, and NASCAR podcasts all in the same place. 
hit subscribe and get those podcasts right as they are posted. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Tuesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.